Okay, well, welcome to Praska Boys Garage, and on this episode, we have a 110cc Chinese ATV that might be in the worst shape I have ever picked one up in before. Uh, I spent a whopping 80 bucks, had to drive about an hour to go get it, and now it is here on the table. Uh, it is going to need probably one of if not two of everything. Uh, so stick with me on this build, you guys. We're going to do a walk around it and uh, start making a parts list and get the thing torn apart. Well, here you go, you guys. This thing is a basket case, but I will tell you one thing. The $80 I spent on it, I believe 100% that it was worth it. And here's why. Just looking at just this image, I've got four good tires, a full frame with suspension, and a motor. Now, we don't know the shape that the motor's in, but just those parts alone uh, on a future build would be worth the 80 bucks. So it's money well spent, especially if we can turn this thing into a good looking running machine. And that's what I plan to do. Now, going through the whole thing, um, we're gonna do the usual stuff, clean up the wheels, clean up the exhaust, that's all trivial stuff. We're gonna get the motor taken off, put it onto the uh, motor stand and go through that, make sure that's good to go. Uh, working around it, the controls are pretty, pretty tough. Um, I'll, I don't know if I'll replace the cables and the controls yet at this point. We'll see when we get a little bit farther into diving down. One thing about this ATV is the plastics are completely trash. It's missing the front. Uh, it's missing the seat. Uh, it's cracked all the way up the side and the front. And for me, I just don't know if we're going to be able to bring them back. I really don't want to buy new ones because they are rather expensive and that would cut way into our profit line, but we may need to. That will be a decision later. But for now, we're going to stick to the easy stuff. We know uh, we're going to need all new wiring throughout the whole thing because this wiring is completely trash. It's unplugged. It's snipped. It's old. It's cracked. Uh, we're going to need to go through the motor, replace the carburetor, replace the air filter, replace the chain. All this stuff we normally do... Uh, within our budget and this one is going to be no different so i'm excited to dive in i'm excited to get this one going and make it look good and drive it so here's the teardown of the new 110 atv All right, well, I'm gonna take you in for a closer look uh, in the middle of the teardown. I did not think I was gonna turn this into a welding project, but under further inspection, uh, it looks like it's gonna be that way. As you can see right here, there is a crack that goes right through this frame. It's also on the other side. Uh, so we're gonna to wanna to address that right away. Also, when we took the exhaust off, um, I believe the rust probably got the better of it. As you can see, the muffler side of things, it's, it's just pretty much gone. Uh, so we'll do our best at getting this thing cleaned up and rewelding that throughout the project. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to continue getting this thing tore down, pull the motor, and put it on the stand. All right, the motor is set up on the stand. I've got it connected to a 12 volt battery directly to the starter because we're going to check that as well. Also compression. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is change the oil. I've got some 10W40 Pens oil set up to go in it uh, with a 17 millimeter bolt. So we'll take that out. While that's draining, I'll go ahead and pull the spark plug now. That is a 16 millimeter. Ooh, that is uh, definitely needed to be changed. All right, we put the plug back in. We let it drain for about 15 minutes or so. So let's go ahead and put it full of oil. And then we'll test the starter. All right, 
Oil level looks good. Now to test the starter. I did go ahead and hook up the battery charger to the 12 volt battery just to make sure we had enough juice. Uh, it's reading 12.7 right now, so that should be plenty of power uh, to start this thing. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Okay, what you do is you take the power wire directly from the starter itself, hook it up to the 12 volt battery. Then you take another wire that comes off the negative side and you gotta strike it against anywhere on the starter itself. Uh, that should jump the ground and actually start the motor. Uh, what we're just checking to see is if it actually turns over because then after that we can check for compression. Here we go. Uh, we got nothing. Shoot, 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 shoot. I know the starter's corroded, but it should have, if it was good, it should have started by now. Well, that's not good. Um, well, we're not gonna be able to check compression because it looks like we've got a bad starter. I'm gonna end up taking the starter off, which is gonna involve taking the side cover off, taking the side chain off, and the starter motor off. We'll try it again on the bench when that's off. We'll go ahead and speed the camera up. That way you guys don't have to watch that in real time. And I'll talk to you in a second. All right, back on the table is our starter motor uh, hooked up to the 12 volt battery. Again, I'm gonna take ground and, and the inside of this is a lot cleaner surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and strike it a little bit. Still got nothing there. Um, now, one thing I did notice was this, the power cord, if you guys can see that. It's real loose. It doesn't feel like it's making much connection on the inside. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't strike this while moving this. Yep. So there's just a bad connection inside. Some of you guys, see if I can't get it to go the whole time. Some people may think that they could rebuild that or open this up and put it, solder back together, fix it. I don't, they're 10 to 12 bucks on eBay. I'm not going to mess around with that. So we're going to go ahead and junk this one, order a brand new one. While we're waiting on that, continue on with the build. All right, next up, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to go ahead and take a grinder wheel to this crack on the frame. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and put a weld all the way from front to back. Uh, that way it's nice and covered and we can build up some extra support. Just to take you guys in for a closer look at that crack itself, you can see if it'll focus. It's a pretty good sized crack, almost to the point where it's broke all the way through. On the back side, if it'll pick up, you'll see just a little bit has not broke off yet. So we're going to go ahead and get that cleaned up right now and uh, have it back to normal. Okay, we'll go ahead and take the grinder and uh, clean up that weld.
All right, I think we did a pretty good job there. Uh, we'll go ahead and clean this up off camera. I'll shoot it with some flat black paint, that way it doesn't rust. Let's move on to the exhaust. All right, well for right now, all I'm gonna do is clean up the spots where we're going to weld. Eventually the whole thing is gonna get stripped off of all the rust and repainted. Uh, but for right now, I just wanna get it back together. So we're gonna take the wire brush again and hit these spots. All right, I'm going to flip it upside down and then take the br wire brush and hit some underneath. And before I get started here, I'm going to take you in for a closer look at what I'm trying to accomplish. The back side of the exhaust is you can see it's it, it's broke off and I'm gonna take the welder and I'm gonna do my best to fill that in uh, so it's all welded shut so all the exhaust shoots out the end like it's supposed to and none escapes right there. I do not claim to be a professional welder, but that was a big hole to try and fill. And all I did was I turned my setting down on my welder just to put some fill in there. I started high to get it to fuse together. And then ultimately I really just started building the weld up to seal it all up on top of that. So this is the end result. It's not pretty. It's gonna be almost impossible to get a grinder in there to make it look pretty, but I will clean up the outside. We'll clean up this pipe and it will look good enough because it will be hidden underneath. All right, time to get the rest of this exhaust stripped off, ready for paint. Man, I will tell you, that was some tough, tough rust. That took me quite a while. I don't think the time lapse will do it justice, but uh, for the most part, it is cleaned up. A couple more small things I'm gonna do before paint. I'm probably gonna go in with the grinder and clean up the welds as best I can. Uh, clean out this cover paint plate, and then we're gonna go ahead and get her painted. While the exhaust is drying, I'm gonna move my attention towards the body. Like I mentioned before, it's not in great shape. Uh, to my surprise, the front, no cracks. It looks actually pretty good. Um, I went ahead and ordered the cover and the gas tank cover as well. Uh, so that is on its way. Uh, but for the back end, it's in pretty rough shape and I'm trying to think what I can do. I do not want to spend the $80 to replace it, so here's my idea. Uh, this piece is cracked pretty bad, uh, missing this whole front footrest part where this side has the footrest part, but this back fender is destroyed. So I have a good back and a bad front and I have a bad back and a good front. What I decided is you'll see that there's body lines in these fenders that go all the way up on both sides. I'm gonna just go ahead and cut along those lines. Now, I don't know if it's gonna look good or bad, but it's definitely gotta look better than what I have now. Uh, that's my game plan. Here is me going ahead and cutting this thing up. Thank you. 
Well, I am a little biased when it comes to the look of this thing because, well, I did the work, but I wanna be honest, I think it looks awesome. It's got that naked, no fender look to it, which is still super aggressive. Now, what I have left to do is to go with the sandpaper and clean up these rough cuts that I just did. Also, there's still a crack right here that will go ahead and take some plastic weld and put that back together. Uh, and overall, we'll hit it with a primer and then we'll paint it. All right, guys, the sanding is complete. I did go ahead, if you saw on the uh, time lapse, I was drilling some holes. We're gonna go ahead and use a zip tie look. Uh, I think with as, as aggressive as we're going with the look of this thing, I think that just makes it look a little bit better than just filling it in with plastic fill. Uh, it is 10 degrees outside. I am not gonna go ahead and pressure wash those in that cold. I'm gonna take them inside my bathtub, scrub them down, we'll bring them back, get them painted. All right, we are waiting for the chassis to dry and the plastics with the second coat of primer to dry. In the meantime, that starter did come in, so Connor and I are gonna get it put back on. So like before, we just take, we hook up power to the starter and we're gonna ground. And there we go. And I can already feel pressure coming off. I'm gonna put my finger in, see if it blows my finger off. Yep. So now let's check for compression. You see, everybody see that? All right, let's see what it comes out to be. Looks to be about 125 which is perfect. It's a perfect, perfect, healthy motor. One twenty-five again. All right. I believe this will run once we get it all set up. Now that the motor is mounted back on the ATV, I'm gonna grab the new wiring harness we just got. I'm gonna lay it out on the table and get it hooked up just for now and see if I can't get this thing to fire up. All right, I've got the wiring harness assembled 
off the ATV. And the reason why I do this is because I wanna make sure I got a good harness. They come directly from China. Um, I've had them come before where the fuse has been blown. I had one where there was a couple wires that were crossed or miscolored. I just wanna make sure before I go and do all the work to get it all pretty on top, I wanna make sure that it works. And that's what we just did. So I've got it all hooked up. I've got the battery hooked up. Uh, and now we're gonna test start it to see if it'll turn over. If it does, we'll dribble some fuel down the intake and see if it'll fire. Now, there are two brake, uh, brake light indicators. There's one for the handle and there's one for the foot. Uh, the foot one, there isn't one on this ATV, uh, so that will be left open. Therefore, we're gonna act as if we're pulling the brake handle by putting these two together, all right? So the key is on, those two are together, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's in the run position, and we're gonna hit the button, and we are good. We are actually in gear uh, because the back is running, so I gotta get it out of gear. Also, we have spark, which is a good sign. I'm gonna hop this into neutral, then we'll see if we can't put some fuel down it. All right, it is back in neutral. And we're gonna put the spark plug in and dribble a little bit of fuel down it. Dribble just a little bit of fuel. That might be too much, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. It runs. Let's give it one more try. Woo. Smoky. Do it one more time. Sounds awesome. There we go. So we know it runs. We know it's uh, got spark, it's got compression, the starter works, everything's good to go. So now it's time to get everything buttoned up on the ATV. That way we can move on to getting this thing finished up. All right, wiring is all done. Everything is buttoned up nice and neat uh, with zip ties. The battery is resting on top because that actually goes inside the plastics on this one. So I'll feed those power and ground wire up through and then I'll hook them up to the battery once that back plastic is done being painted. Uh, other than that, it is all hooked up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it one more practice run, make sure everything is back to normal and it fires before moving on to the next step. And we gotta hold our brake together, key on, brake together in the run position, and we're good. Dribble a little bit of fuel, make sure we still have spark. Might have been a little much fuel. Uh oh. There we go. Okay. All right, on to the next. All right, next up on the list is the fuel system. Now, I went ahead and already put the intake on the motor, uh, and what I found was that when I put the gas station on and that on, we had quite a few clearance issues with the wiring. So I've kind of adjusted this down and pushed the CDI out a little bit. That way we've had clearance for both uh, the fuel lines and the carburetor. So for now, I'm gonna get the fuel tank, uh, carburetor, and fuel lines all lined up, as well as the petcock.
All right, well, as it actually turns out, I am out of fuel lines. I'm gonna have to put the fuel system on a pause for now until I run to the store and pick some up. In the meantime, I'm gonna move to the handlebars. Now, the handlebars, they are in pretty rough shape. So my plan will be to strip them down, paint them black, and then I actually have all brand new controls. We've got brand new brakes with the brake reservoir. Uh, we also have a brand new throttle to go on. That will be put on next. As it turns out, I did not hit the record button when I was painting these handlebars. I put them on a chassis saver first, and then I hit it with a flat black. I also have all the controls and handlebar stuff ready to go. Uh, so while that dries, we're gonna move on to wet sanding and painting the first coat on the body. All right, that turned out great. I'm gonna move back to the handles and get all the front controls assembled. All right guys, so all the controls are mounted. The only thing we have left to do at this point is to fill this reservoir up with brake fluid and then actually bleed the brakes. Now how I plan on doing that is I took this zip tie and you can see I zipped it down to just enough that when I pull this brake handle all the way down, I can actually lock it in place. What that allows me to do is keep all the pressure and all the air back to the caliper. And then if you, see, if you look on the back of this caliper, I put a hose that connects to that bleeder screw. And so as the pressure's there, I will release the air, tighten that bleeder screw back down, continue to pump and head back, pump and head back. That's what I'm doing next. All right guys, brake system is complete. The brakes are bled. Time to finish up this gas tank and fuel lines and also put the new chain on. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to put the body on. So the fuel systems are done. The chain is on. Everything is lined up and secure. Time to see what this bad boy looks like. All right, guys, this thing is turning out awesome the seat looks great the new front plastics with the red against the black looks super aggressive i love the styling we are almost getting ready to finish this build up last but not least we've got to put the exhaust on it still and clean up a couple more parts get them into black get them on the atv and let's ride it And while that first coat is drying, let's put some gas in this thing and see if it fires up and idles. The key is on. Choke all the way up. Pull on the brake handle. Let's see if she'll go. And help if I hook the battery up.
try it again. Pull the brake. Oh, let's turn gas on too. We need gas. We need battery. Let's try it again. So it's idling really high. I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to go into that and check that out. Cause I just tried to adjust the idle screw and it didn't idle back down. I'm wondering if I've got the throttle stuck open too much or if that slide isn't set all the way, but we'll get that figured out here shortly. But the good news is that it runs, it idles. Man, she fired right up. Well, next up on the list was to get these wheels cleaned up. And I thought to myself, while we're waiting on paint to dry, I did notice that the front left wheel was dragging a little bit. And I thought, well, there's probably some rust in there, so let me take this wheel off real quick, off camera, and clean it up, and then get ready to do the wheels. Well, I got a little carried away. Uh, what turned out to be a small little fix ended up being me completely destroying this brake and wheel hub assembly. As you can see, it is in 100 pieces because I had no choice but to take a sledgehammer and just basically go to town. What the problem was, was these bearings not only would not spin or they'd spin very little, but they were also seized and so I couldn't pull them off. And I tried to use a puller, I tried to use heat, I tried to use uh, uh, just a wedge to get in there. And at the end of the day, brute force was the only thing that could actually get that wheel assembly off. So one more thing to buy, one more thing to do, but while we are still waiting on the hardware uh, and that stuff to dry, I will order the new parts here and we will get to braking and cleaning and repainting the wheels. All right guys, wheels are broke down. It's time to hit them with some paint stripper, clean all that paint off. Now while that paint stripper does its job, that new brake hub assembly and wheel bearings is in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that put back on the ATV. Here's a look at the wheels now that they're all finished up. I went ahead and hit them with a rust stop first, and then after that I took like a farm enamel gloss black and hit that over top of it just to hopefully give it some extra strength over time. Now, it did not come out perfect by 
any means, but it is a hell of a lot better than that rusty paint chip mess that we had started with. Uh, also, I went ahead and, inst and installed all of the valve stems. So those are in. These rims are ready for the wheels to go on. We're gonna put those back on the ATV and I'm ready to ride this thing. All right guys, so the 110 build is a wrap. This thing turned out awesome. I am super stoked uh, with the results we got, especially because it was a left for dead, uh, parts only type machine when we got it. And now it looks good, it runs good, and it's gonna bring someone some joy for a long time to come. Now off camera, I did wrap a few things up, uh, like putting the battery in and getting that hardwired into the body, uh, as well as fixing with the zip ties and then also hard mounting all the plastics down. Otherwise, this thing was a fun project. It was a great start to finish. So thank you so much for everyone that stuck with me on this build. Um, I appreciate your support and uh, we'll keep the content coming. Next up, if you haven't seen it in the background, some of the shots picked up a little 50 CC and we're gonna do that one for my four-year-old next. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.